So there we have it, another season has been concluded in the championship. As you can see on screen now, there are the final standings. Norwich have gone up as champions alongside Sheffield United. The playoffs this season are going to be absolutely fascinating. We've got Leeds going up against Derby in a refixture of Spygate going on. And as well as that, we've got a local encounter between West Brom and Aston Villa. So we've still got a lot to play for in the playoffs, but this is the end of the regular season. And we had a lot going on over the weekend, which will be discussed in today's video. So make sure you leave a comment in the comments down below as to what did you make of your team's performance on the final day. And as a whole, really, what have you made of your team season? Before we do get into any of the games, I will include your guys' comments on screen now. So if any of you did successfully manage to get any of your score predictions correct, then I will include your comment on screen now. And fair play to everyone who did get one. It was a pretty topsy-turvy week in terms of some of the results coming up, which will be discussed today. But without further ado, let's hop in to talk about some of these games. So we started things out at Villa Park, where Norwich were crowned champions with a 2-1 away victory. I wasn't sure where the performance levels would be at from this Norwich side, as I'm sure the players have been out celebrating all week. But fair play to them, they got the job done in this one. Aston Villa came into this one with their mind sort of half on the playoffs and not really on this game. They had made five changes going into it, dropping a couple of their key players like Jack Grealish, John McGinn and Tammy Abraham in preparation for the playoffs. But Norwich started this game really well. A fantastically worked goal from Timu Puki. Kenny McLean with a really intelligent through ball into Arnold Hernandez. He cut the ball back and Timu Puki, I think that was 30th goal in all competitions this season. And it's just little clever, intricate movements like that which makes me think that Norwich can actually adapt fairly well to the Premier League. I think they're going to be a really entertaining side to watch next season up there and I think they could surprise a few people as well. Aston Villa did get back into the game though. Jonathan Codger, a nice ball coming in from Conor Hurrahan. Codger just getting in front of his man. Imagine to just get the faintest of touches on it to make it 1-1. And after that the game was sort of in the balance. Both sides were having chances. Arnold Hernandez had a really good chance for Norwich just before half time. A curling effort from outside the box which came off the crossbar. Both goalkeepers were kept fairly busy in the second half until the 86 minute when Jamal Lewis went on a marauding run forward. Got the ball into Varancic. He pulled the trigger just outside the box with a fantastic finish to make it 2-1 to Norwich. And in the end of course that was enough to go ahead and secure them the league title this season and what a campaign it has been from Norwich. You know I did a video earlier on in the week reacting to my predictions from early on in the season. I think I predicted Norwich to finish 14th this season so the job that Daniel Fark has done there and some of the fantastic attacking football they played throughout this season. They are more than worthy champions and they've certainly surprised me but it's been a fantastic journey for them. And then for Aston Villa their full attention will be turning towards the playoffs where they got a really tasty encounter against West Brom coming up. And then we have Blackburn drawing two all with Swansea City. Quite a good game of football this one with both sides creating a few chances. The opening goal for Blackburn scored by Daryl Ennehan. Quite a bit of suspect goalkeeping from the Swansea keeper Nordwell. I think the ball came into the box. He sort of misjudged it trying to go with a punch and the ball ended up in the back of his net. Maybe goalkeepers a position Swansea will be looking at over the summer but in fairness to the away side they managed to get back into it. Two good headed goals by Baker Richardson and Oliver McBurney managed to make it 2-1 to Swansea before half time. They also had some other chances to probably make it 3-1 in that half as well. But then in the second half Blackburn Rovers did come back very strong. Bradley that kept his composure in front of the goal to make it 2-2 and towards the later stage of this game it probably was the home side Blackburn who had the better chances to go on and win this one. I think that both sides have had respectable seasons this year if I'm being honest. Blackburn finishing 15th considering it's their third season back in the championship. They'll be looking to kick on from that next season but I think that the core group of players they've got there is a good bunch. And for Swansea as well I think Graham Potter's done a very good job there. They finished 10th this season. I've enjoyed watching Swansea really. They played some really good stuff over the course of the season. If they just had that little bit more consistency away from home they seriously could have challenged for the top six this season. And then we have Brentford beating Preston by three goals nil. Not the ideal way for Preston to end the season. Ever since we got beat by Reading away, our form's really gone off a cliff. I think that our players have been on the beach for the last few weeks and this performance was probably a testament to that. At times, Brentford were just pulling us all around the pitch. There was quite a bit of time added on in the first half after Gene Villa had to, be, had to go off on a stretcher after sustaining quite a serious injury, so I'm hoping he's doing all right now. But in added time in the first half, that's when Brentford got their first goal through Conser. Brentford worked really well in operating in tight areas so you've always got to be aware of that but Preston really should have done better with cutting out this first goal. The ball slowly rolled past I think about five Preston players before Conser finally managed to smash it in to make it 1-0. In the second half things then went from bad to worse for Preston. Neil Lepay made it 2-0 to Brentford with quite a nice work goal and then the third was also a very well taken goal as Preston's defence was just backing off and backing off. The result has meant that Brentford do finish the season 11th and Preston finish in 14th. I think that both teams depending on how they do over the summer in terms of the players they sell and look to recruit. Both could easily be challenging for the top six next season. I think there's a good young core group of players in both sides there. In terms of potential going into the future and the squads that both of them have at the moment, I think that they're in fairly similar situations where a couple more additions and they really could challenge next season. And then we had Derby beating West Brom by three goals to one. Derby needed this one to be all three points with Borough winning this weekend to go and secure their place in the playoffs this season. I'm sure at times there was a bit of tension going around the stadium, 
but Derby did manage to get the job done for this one. It was Martin Wycon who gave the home side the lead after 90 minutes with a nice headed goal. West Brom got back into it in the second half. A really nice effort from Johansson to level things up. Bennett poked Derby back in front in the 70th minute, although after that was when a bit of controversy did start in this game. Tom Lawrence going down for the Derby penalty for the third goal. I mean, it's not a penalty. He's gone down far too easily there. He's basically thrown himself to the floor. Wilson stepped up to take the penalty and made it 3-1 to Derby. After that, there was even more controversy when Robson Carnu was shown a red card after he kicked out at Bradley Johnson. There wasn't a lot in it, you know, Bradley Johnson did go down quite dramatically, but even so, why Robson Khan is doing that in the 92nd minute when the game's already gone and you've got the playoffs coming up is just absolutely idiotic. But like I said, the win for Derby has secured their place in the playoffs this season and that top six is just a fascinating watch it's going to be. Between Leeds and Derby now, that's going to be a really interesting battle once again between Lampard and Bielsa. There's already been a bit of tension between those two managers so far this season, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that fixture throws up now. And then we had Holder in one apiece with Bristol City. Bristol City needed quite a few things to go their way this weekend for them to break into the top six, but uh, even if they had gone on to win this game, it wouldn't have been enough for them to secure their place in the playoffs this season, so they can take a bit of reinsurance from that, but going away to Hull's not the sort of fixture you really want in a game where you need to pick up all three points, because Hull so far this season have had a very impressive home record. Before Hull did go on to take the lead in the second half, though, Bristol City had crafted out some decent chances. I'm not sure how they didn't manage to get on the score sheet first, to be honest. You know, Jeju had a fantastic fantastic chance which he hit against the bar but like I said in the second off was when Hull came into their own Jackson Irvine giving them the lead in the 55th minute with a nice finish from outside the box after that Bristol City were trying to do absolutely everything to get back into the game they had had a goal ruled out for handball and even when they did level things up in the last minute that goal wasn't originally ruled out before the referee had changed his mind in the end that one went down as a Henriksen own goal and finished as a 1-1 draw so in the end for Bristol City the top six wasn't to be I still think it's been a very respectable campaign from them though in the end they finished the season in eighth position four points away from the top six and I think if they keep this group of players together for next season they'll have a real go at it and uh, in terms of Hull City this season I've said it throughout the season but they really have surprised me with how well they have done I'm interested to see if they do lose a couple of their big stars over the summer I think they're definitely worth keeping your eye on but overall not a bad season for both these two sides and then the result which not a lot of people saw coming we had Ipswich beating Leeds by three goals to two as the home side bounced out of the championship in style this one was just a really crazy game and Leeds are going into the playoffs now with a really odd mindset defensively lately, especially in this game, they were looking absolutely all over the place. From reading over all the comments, I don't get the impression that Leeds fans are particularly confident going into the playoffs, you know. If they were going into the playoffs, say, two or so months ago, the mentality would be completely different, but after their recent run of results, I'm not sure where the Leeds heads are at, at the moment. The opening goal was a really weak one for Leeds to concede. It was a ball coming into the box. There was about a pile-up of five Leeds players in there, but somehow Ipswich still managed to get the ball into the back of the net. Leeds responded before half-time with a nice finish from Click, but then soon into the second half, Ipswich made it 2-1. There was was a little bit of controversy with Leeds' second goal. It was a fairly nicely worked goal, actually. The ball coming over the top, Ailing putting it back across goal. Roof somehow hitting the crossbar from about two yards out, and then Dallas following it in, but the Ipswich players were adamant that Dallas had handled this in. And then after that, it looked like Leeds would go on to wrap up the matches. Ipswich were reduced to 10 men. Leeds had a penalty. Kamar Roof stepped up to take it, but it wasn't his day. He completely squirmed that one. And then in the 90th minute, Ipswich went on to snatch all three points through Colin Kwana. There was an awful mix-up between Kassir and Ailing. Both of them got in each other's way. The ball fell to Kwana and he had an easy tap in to make it 3-2. In terms of Ipswich, it won't be easy for them going down into League 1, but I could see them maybe bouncing back with Paul Lambert. I think they've got a, a better structure in place now at the club. And then in terms of Leeds United, it's going to be Derby in the playoff semi-finals, and with how Leeds are playing at the moment, that's that's anyone's guess how that's going to turn out. And then we had Forrest beating Bolton by one goal to nil. Not the best game going on this weekend. Joe Lolly scoring the only goal of the game. It was a fairly nicely taken goal from him in the 28th minute. You could sort of tell that neither side had anything to play for. In my preview to this game, I was saying that maybe Forrest could absolutely batter Bolton by about five goals to nil or something and run away with it, but with Forrest not really having anything to play for, they weren't quite going at this Bolton side at 100 miles an hour. They could have had more goals than the one they went on to score, but in the end, it wasn't really to matter anyway. Forrest have ended the season in ninth in the table, and they have won their last three matches. I'm going to find it interesting as to what the Forrest board decides to do over the summer. Are they going to stick with Martin O'Neill? Forrest fans, let me know down below what you would think of that. And in terms of Bolton, obviously, their relegation was confirmed a while ago now but from what has happened this season the, the club will probably be facing the repercussions for you know the foreseeable future now it is a real dire situation at Bolton at the club at the moment and it's going to be a tough ride for them and the fans I'm sure and then we had a goalless draw going on between Reading and Birmingham for this one it probably was Reading who crafted out the better opportunities they were getting a bit of joy going down both wings looking to cut inside Lee Camp dug Birmingham out on a couple of occasions he, he made one particularly good reflex save in the first half but apart from that they weren't really 
see that many clear-cut chances. It's also worth noting that John O'Shea came on for his last ever professional appearance in the 90th minute for this one. But overall, despite both sides finishing fairly low down in the table, I think they've actually both had quite respectable seasons, given all the circumstances going into this year, you know. With Reading starting the season really poorly under Paul Clement, they managed to turn that around under Gomez, brought in a lot of experience in January, and since then the football's been a lot better. Birmingham finished the season in 17th position, obviously given their EFL points deduction, that's the reason they are so low down. But despite both sides finishing fairly low down this season, I see potential in both of them if they do have a good summer going into next season. And then we have Middlesbrough beating Rotherham by two goals to one. Despite that, the three points wasn't enough to get Borough into the playoffs. They were relying on Derby dropping points this weekend. Obviously, that didn't happen with them beating West Brom by three goals to one. Borough actually found themselves in an identical position than what Preston found themselves in last year. We were relying on Derby dropping points to make it into the playoffs ourselves, but that obviously wasn't the case in the end. But uh, for this one, Middlesbrough got two early goals of Sombolonga from the penalty spot, and John B. McHale smashing one in before half time, making it 2 0. Rotherham came back stronger in the second half, though. They created quite a few chances. In the end, they did get back into the game from the penalty spot in the 86th minute, but Borough were able to hold out four or three points. In terms of Middlesbrough's season, it's been a really odd one because they have always been knocking around in and around that top six. You know, they've always been flirting with the playoffs this season. But despite that, it's still been a pretty bland season with some of the football they've been playing. So I'm interested to get some Middlesbrough fans' perspectives of what would you like to see happen over the summer? Would you like to see Tony Pulis still be there next season? And of course, Rotherham's relegation was confirmed the other week. Despite that, it was still a good performance they put in for this one. They actually created quite a few decent opportunities. You know, Darren Randolph had to dig Borough out on a couple of occasions. I think going into League One, if they do manage to keep that core group of players together, they'll have a fantastic chance of bouncing back next season. And then we had QPR beating Wednesday by two goals to one, a result which I did not see coming. Wednesday for this one just looked really like luster. There was nothing sticking for them going forward. No real energy or passages of play going forward. And QPR with the side crafting out the much better opportunities. They managed to take the lead after Josh Scowen had the ball in the back of the net after 28 minutes. It was actually a fairly nicely worked goal. But it's fair to say that neither side was brilliant at taking penalties for this one. In the second half, Forestieri stepped up with a penalty for Wednesday, blazed that one over the bar. In the 80th minute, Eze then had a penalty for Queen's Park Rangers. That was saved by Westwood. Until eventually, Wednesday got their second penalty of the game, and Hector stepped up and slotted that in to make it 1-1. However, the game wasn't finished there with Smith popping up with a 93rd minute winner for QPR with a fantastic smashing finish. And QPR more than deserved this one. They were the better side for this one, I'm mean, no doubt. It was a bit of a disappointing way for Wednesday to end the season. You know, since Steve Bruce has come in, I think that attitude and application has been a big thing there. That wasn't really on show for this game. And since the game, they've actually gone on to release six players. I think the most notable name in that list being Gary Hooper. So Wednesday fans, what do you make of that? Let me know down below. And then we had Stoke drawing two all with Sheffield United. After seeing some of the videos going around on Twitter with some of the Sheffield United players out celebrating during the week, I wasn't sure what sort of performance to expect from them. But some of those videos are absolutely fantastic. For this one, it was Sam Vokes for the home side who gave them the lead there with a fantastic volley. Brought it down in his chest, waited for the ball to fall to him, and then brilliantly picked out the far post of Dean Henderson. Throughout spells of this game, Sheffield United were probably looking a little bit leggy. That's, you know, probably because of all the celebrations going on, but you can't blame them, you know. He's already gone to secure promotion. But in the second off, Dowell did get Sheffield United back into it with a nice sweeping finish. Shawcross then got Stoke back into the game. Quite uncharacteristically poor marking from a set piece allowed Shawcross to make it 2-1 before Ender Stevens came up with a drilled finish to make it 2-2. Obviously with Norwich going ahead and winning at Aston Villa, that meant that this game wasn't really to matter because had Sheffield United won, they still wouldn't have gone on to win the title. But finishing second is an absolutely unbelievable achievement and I'm looking forward to seeing what this group of players can go on and do in the Premier League. You know, they've been defying expectations all season and who knows, they could still go on to do that next season. Going forward into the future, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Wilder can do with this group of players. In terms of Stoke City, without doubt the biggest underachievers in the league this season. Can they go on and rectify that next season? I'm not sure. Under Nathan Jones so far, I've seen really contrasting performances. So judging by how they do over the summer, next season's got to be a big one for Stoke, I feel like. And then the last game of the weekend saw Wigan beating Millwall by one goal to nil. Joe Garner scoring the only goal of the game in the 15th minute for this one. What I thought was quite a nice touch was Wigan to give Reese James the captain's armband for this one and I mean what a season he's had on loan at Chelsea this will be his last appearance at Wigan of course as I mean next season he's got to be playing in the Premier League in fairness to Millwall they actually had some decent chances to get back into this game despite finishing as a 1-0 you know both teams were creating quite a bit for this one Millwall did have the ball in the back of the net but that goal was ruled out for a foul in the build up and Walton the Wigan goalkeeper was called on on a couple of occasions to keep Millwall at bay the result means that Millwall finished the season 21st just one place above the relegation zone and Wigan finished this season in 18th. I think that both sides are going to look to take precautions over the summer to make sure they don't end up in a similar situation next season, you know. Neither side are going to want another relegation battle on their hands, and so I'm sure both sets of fans will be hoping the club has a big summer transfer window to ensure
ensure that they don't end up in this situation next season. But guys, there you have it. That will now wrap up for this last episode of the Championship Roundup this season. In terms of my goal of the week on the final weekend, I think I'm probably going to give it to Sam Vokes of Stoke City. I thought his volley against Sheffield United was a superbly taken goal. And then in terms of my result of the weekend, I'm going to have to give it to Ipswich Town for beating Leeds by three goals to two in very dramatic circumstances. But guys, there you have it. That will now wrap up for this video. So thank you so much for watching. Just so you guys are aware, I will be doing some prediction videos for both legs of the playoff semi-finals and then for the playoff final as well. So you've got that to look forward to. But apart from that, guys, that will now wrap up for this video. So if you're going to enjoy, make sure you leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. As well as that, make sure you do subscribe for some regular championship content. But apart from that, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.